Many call it the greatest racing circuit in the world, and it's hard to argue against that. As a dedicated road course, nothing else compares. Built between 1925 and 1927 as an economic stimulus project, engineers sought to create the world's greatest. With inspiration from Italy's great Targa Florio, Germany's edition would be a more concise but hardly short 18 miles split across two main racing layouts, the roughly five mile southern loop, the Sugeschleife and the greater 14-mile northern loop, the Nordschleife. The combined course, aptly named the Gesamtstrecke, was used initially, but it was shortly the Nordschleife, which became the focus for international competition. And from there, most know the story. The Nordschleife and the Nürburgring as a whole is deserving in its fame and popularity. It's a course unlike any other, and one which we can be thankful still exists to this day. Changes were infrequent on the ring. For almost 40 years after the opening of the circuit, it remained nearly untouched. This could be owed to its advanced design, for when it opened in 1927, many Grand Prix were still contested on dirt and gravel roads, the odd cobblestone sections. Pavement was a luxury. The Nürburgring featured smooth asphalt with proper grading and cambers, designed for fast cars. By modern eyes, it would have still looked crude with its characteristic leaps and jumps, but for the time it was space-aged and fantastically conducive to legendary races, truly a place for the best drivers to excel. But as speeds of the formula car increased in post-war racing, the natural nature of the course was challenged. Well into the 1960s, the circuit was as it always had been, a narrow strip of tarmac with little in the way of safety enhancements. With drivers likely to find a tree or worse when running off the course, the results were often as expected. But it was for 1967 that the only major change to the track layout up to that point was made. This was to insert the Hohenrein chicane at the end of the long back straight to slow the cars coming to the start area. The 1967 race luckily went on safely, but for 1968, drivers found themselves on the grid with the worst conditions imaginable. What transpired from there is a story for another day. The stuff of legend. Jackie Stewart seemed to transcend reality and piloted his mantra to a stunning victory in torrential rain. In an interview, he dubbed the circuit the Green Hell, and that name stuck forever since. And so it was Jackie leading his committee of drivers pioneering for safety, which demanded changes at the Nürburgring. And after a fatal accident involving Gerhard Mitter and preparations for the 1969 Grand Prix, they'd get their wish. For 1970, the plan was to run the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim to allow the Nürburgring to undergo these extensive renovations. At the cost of over 17 million Deutschmarks, or over $40 million in today's money, the entire Nordschleife was rebuilt. Safety fences were installed, emergency lanes paved, Armco barriers erected to line much of the course. The runoffs were widened, berms made less severe. The circuit was repaved, straightened, and widened in spots. Even a few of the infamous jumps were flattened out. The resulting course, while far from what could have been considered safe, was brought up to much higher standards. Enough at least to return the German Grand Prix to its spiritual home. For 1971, the drivers lined up again to race this cleansed version. But despite all the changes, it was still the Nürburgring. By 1976, it was clear that F1 would be moving on from the ring, requiring nearly five times the marshalling staff the difficulty of filming for television, and of course, the danger, were all cited as reasons for its departure. But as if to punctuate that point, after personally protesting and being nearly forced to do the race, Nicky Lauda suffered his devastating, fiery crash on the second lap of that year's Grand Prix. And that pretty much sealed the deal. The official dismissal of the Nordschleife from Grand Prix racing. And so we've been brought back once again to 1971 with Ryza's latest release, the historic Nürburgring for Automobilista 2. This track joins the other 1971 circuits as a truly remarkable recreation of the time, just as it was after those initial renovations after 1970. It's a mixture of new and old. Sections of the course look almost as they do today, albeit a bit less advertisements maybe and different curbing. But then, coming around a corner, you'll find yourself having gone back in time. Hedged walls, wooden fences, 
a refined but not totally spoiled roller coaster of elevation. We've had several great renditions of historic Nürburgrings over the years, but many concentrate quite naturally in how the circuit was in the 1960s and earlier years. What we have here is dealing with the transition, a picture into what the fight for safety really looked like, the struggle of making this dangerous sport palatable. So for every gleaming barrier, a building is still exposed. For every sanitized corner, the infamous jumps still exist. The result is a circuit with measurable character and one which demands your attention. For those familiar with the Nordschleife from modern versions, it won't take you long to find your way. There are differences here and there, but you'll mostly find yourself on those familiar bends. But by far the most striking difference is in the starting area. Featuring the original pits and paddock in the 180 degree Sudskere. The 1971 rendition predates the addition of the modern Grand Prix circuit by nearly a decade and a half. In its place and to many surprises, perhaps the highlight of the entire release, the addition of the five mile Sudschleife, Southern Loop, allowing us all to experience everything the Nürnberg Ring had to offer. Your first lap on the Sudschleife will help you realize just how much work was done to the Nordschleife in 1970. Completely unsanitized and how it was, fence posts, trees, bumpy asphalt, and completely lacking runoffs. It's danger around every bend for driver and spectator alike. The Sudschleife itself is worth your time. So with such a vast circuit release, there's so much to look at and discover. There are details one can only appreciate driving slow laps on the course. Period cars parked on the hills, camping areas for spectators, authentic buildings, signs, infrastructure, and terrain. It stretches so far in the distance you really feel a sense of place. At that slow speed, it's impressive detailing. At high speeds, the blur can really fool your mind. And so, in this release, three independent layouts of the Nürburgring, the Nordschleife, the Südschleife, or combined as the Gesamtstrecke. Many hours can be spent enjoying the scenery across all variations, whether that be elbows out in a touring car race, or simply driving slowly and sightseeing on your own time. It's a mesmerizing thrill to lap a car around any version of the Nürburgring, but to do it here, in a Grand Prix machine in the 70s, on a version of the circuit from the 1970s, that makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Fasten your seatbelts for three laps here at the Nürburgring. Lights out, and away we go. A little bit late there on the start, but then throttle up and head down to the first corner. Come up to the Suits car. It's really tight on the first lap. Get it down to second gear as the car in front slides in front of me there. Try to carry the speed around the outside, maybe. That'll turn into the inside, though, which is always good, but then boxed in from the car in front. Nowhere to go, really. You got a car on the curbs in front of him. Slide up the inside and onto the back stretch next to Henri Pescarolo and that BRM. We'll come past the cruise on the right side, maybe get the pit board or a thumbs up, then get it down the gears. So we'll come onto the Nordschleife itself. Ugh, run on the outside there. Luckily, that corner's quite heavily cambered. Help us out, get it down to first and come through the familiar bends. So for anybody that knows the Nordschleife, this will start to look very familiar for you. But there we have on the right side, just a berm, a big hill, and then crowds just behind a wooden fence. Not a lot of safety happening. Just come down to second gear for these twists and bends. You gotta watch for the curbs on much of this track. They really, really upset a car like this. They're quite severe. Not the kind of curbs that you use in a race, more like ones that will contain the cars from going off the circuits. So we'll come around Kittelbacher then in a line being held up just a little bit from the cars in front, but then throttle up. So we'll rush down the hill towards the Flugplatz. And you have to be really careful at these different points. The car comes off the ground there, fly over the top of the hill and hard back on the throttle. Fifth gear will run onto one of the fastest parts of the course as I nip the curb there. A few of them are flattened, but most are really, really difficult. We'll come up to the second place where you get off the ground. You need to make sure the car is absolutely straight when you go off the ground or else a bad bounce on the landing can be the end of your race quite easily. But we'll coming to Arenberg, second gear. Slide it around there. We'll head down to the foxhole. Got a whole pack of cars here in front. It's gonna be really tricky to figure out how to get past. Not a lot of passing opportunities around the Nürburgring. Come 
come to the bottom of the hill, car bottoms out there, get it down a couple of gears, run a little bit wide, coming up to out an hour now. See if I can carry a little speed around the right side maybe. It's a tight chicane, catches a lot of folks out when you're learning the track as these two in front make a slight bit of contact but then throttle up right on the back of Henri, up to fourth gear. We'll come across this little plateau, double left-hander. Spectators up on the up on the hills. They added all the wonderful things like tents and fires and cars and all the stuff to just make it feel like there's a party going on. So that's the vibe the Nurburgring had and still has to some extent, but definitely in the 60s and 70s. It's a place that you brought your family and friends and had a nice day out camping. And you also got to watch some race cars race around one of the greatest courses in the world. And I feel like it captures that quite well from the spectator areas. But we're concentrated on the course. Went through dry wrecks there and into the tightest chicane or tightest corner on the course, that left-hander, and now head down to the village here at the bottom of the hill. And this is quite a bit different than it is these days. I have a feeling this left-hander is tighter than it used to be or is now. And come over a hill on the other side, bounce through the air carry as much speed as possible, rear end, wagging out these two side by side. We'll come up to where Nicky Lauda had his crash in 1976. Oh, those two, it's precarious to go too wide through there. All right down to second gear, want a nice amount of throttle out of this corner to get onto the back section of the course. This is a really fast and long flat out part when you don't have a bunch of cars in front catch up to him but I don't know if there's a place for me to get around so just go out to the dirt there get up to fifth gear runs away from me a little bit I think that's the v12 version this is the 1974 set of cars for Automobilista 2 and uh, one of my favorites I always find myself driving in these makes you feel like you're in in the movie rush a little bit it's always intense racing but it's a lot of fun come through this right hander it's a lot faster than it was a few years earlier and then heavy braking there's the style strike up the hill there to the left so we'll come through this lazy right hander that'll bring us towards the carousel and really nowhere to pass up here just take it nice and easy in a straight line down to first you got to pick your battles around the Nurburgring up they gained a little bit on me through the carousel as they often do up to fourth gear this gets on to one of i know a lot of folks favorite sections of the course it has a great flow to it down to third for the top of the hill and it's all downhill from here quite literally balance it on second gear it's a lot of throttle movements get myself caught up with the gear shift there we'll keep it in third through a lot of this though to this right hander few of these left rights look very similar as you come around a sweeping bend just out to the dirt there but each has their own character so come through a right hand here and into Brunchen it's a very popular corner these days up to third gear back down to second try to get on the throttle so easy to spin a car through there as I almost do myself back down to second here I'm gonna miss the apex to the left track narrows up to the right it's such an easy place and has caught me out several times in learning this circuit in this version of it come over another hop here just be careful on that one as the car gets a little squirrely come over the top of the rise got one more of these leaps this one not quite as severe but awkward because you're turning in the middle of it all right flat out here now we're headed towards the second carousel turn leading into it is a really really late apex much faster than I feel like the modern day circuit is there to the right then we come to the left not quite as big of a hill as I've seen we'll come up a little bit of smoke there in front as we come into the second carousel dive it in the inside let the road do the work there and guide you around now I'll take the double right hander for the final straight and there's a wicked hump jump here Wah. nearly went too far with that one but now onto the Dotinger and this is the thing that made me grin from ear to ear when I was first trying out this track it is the classic Dotinger straight with the hedges on each side and importantly the rises in the terrain you see so many awesome videos of the cars in the 60s and 70s rushing down this straight and it's so neat to have in this sim as I'm gaining quite rapidly on the cars in front got to get around Pescarolo there to the inside lift up a little bit Wah. 
the tear guard in there. Now we'll come down to the chicane as Pescarolo is going to come back on me. Very daring. A little bit late on the brakes, or later than I would want to be, but all the way down to first gear here. We'll close all the way back up on him. You just catch the car there. Well, it's Pescarolo on the inside, but we'll come through the final corners and come across the line for the first lap. Past a few cars there. We'll see what position I'm in. Up to P12. All right, two laps to go, which is an eternity around the Nürburgring. Slow it down plenty early for the first corners. It's an absolute workout racing around here, never mind commentating at the same time in these cars. But I've been doing this combination so much the past few days. Let's try to get a good run here on the back stretch. It's been a pleasure racing around this. It's just so much fun in these cars. We'll throttle up here side by side with Pescarolo. It's gonna be tricky to work this out. This Lotus 72 in front's quite slow as these two make contact. Almost like touring car racing in the 70s Grand Prix cars. They're very, very, very daring AI. But they do make it fun to race against. And they mostly stay on the track. You'll see some crashes here and there. But especially after this has been patched a couple times by Ryza, the AI are, are decent, at least at finishing the races. But always a bit too aggressive. I've tried pretty much every aggression setting in the book with custom AI and without them. It's just the nature of the beast right now, but it's plenty fun to have for a few evenings. It's Pescarello there on the outside, trying to jump on him into Kitobacher. Slight bit of contact there. He's going to run up onto the curb. I'm able to make the pass. It's a little dirty for me, but they're being dirty as well, so we'll take it. It's all fair. Come over the rise and up to the fluke class. Just going to be nice and straight here. It's the easiest place to ruin the, to ruin the race, to crash out of it. Just landing wrong there. The car can get a wicked hop, and it's all over. Pescarolo closing up again to come through this left-hander and down to Arenberg. He backs off, thankfully. My main impression of this and trying out these cars is just how fast it is. I think a lot of folks, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people have tried to take a modern Formula One car to the Nordschleife just to see how it is in a sim. And the main takeaway I have from that is just how ridiculously fast it is and kind of crazy that they would do it. Well, I have to say my feelings are much the same in doing this. I took a look at lap times and in 1976, James Hunt, I think qualified on pole with a 706 and it's pretty easy to get down to those times in these cars. I don't know exactly what lap time we'll be doing in this race today, but I have to imagine it'll be in the low seven minute range. And so they were actually going this fast, maybe in slightly different areas, faster through corners or faster on straights, but more or less the same speed that you're seeing here. In these kind of cars around a circuit like this, and we all know, although that Armco is considered very safe in the day, we all know what Armco can do to a car that's traveling at this high of a speed. So absolutely Titanic stuff. So we'll come through now, dry wrecks, try to get the line here. You wanna miss this first one just a little bit, and then curve it in for the second one, and then you're good to miss this third one, although I understeered a little bit too much there. We'll get down to first gear for this tight left-hander. Just nip the dirt there. This hill as well, like I mentioned on the first lap, has been flattened quite a lot these days. To come over the rise, the Pescarolo behind me trying to look to my left side. We carry some speed through x Oh, I got a bit of a run on the cars in front. Oh, this is such a sketchy place to try to pass. I don't think you could do that. Maybe they can. Down a second. Just want to get a good launch out of here. Might be able to carry some speed up the hill. It's quite steep uphill here, and you'll notice it more in a lower-powered car where it just doesn't seem to accelerate as much. You don't quite notice when you're racing a Grand Prix car or something with a lot of power, like modern cars, because they, they just have enough power to get through it. But this is a very, very steep uphill, and you can even tell we're bogging down a little bit here in fifth gear compared to a flat straight like we'll get at the end of the lap. Down to fourth. It's an easy corner to understeer on. The apex is, is quite long, or the corner itself is quite long. Come through this right-hander. Just a lift of the throttle there. So we'll get it hard on the brakes. Just thinking about lunging up the inside here, but the car in front had the same idea. Try to accelerate out. Or maybe get side by side, but where do you go with it? Coming up to the carousel. Just let it plunge in. Let the road do the work and carry you around. Just don't hop out of it too early. As Pescarolo behind me, I think, rode around the outside. 
no doubt would see that for some cars sometimes. expectations as I think a lot of folks did in coming into this one after seeing how, how nicely done AMS 2's Spa vintage track is. It's Pescarolo again. It's being quite pesky. Pesky Pescarolo for me today. It's his old boxing name I think. All right down to second gear left hander. I had high expectations for this though. They did a great job on that vintage Spa but just the distance that this track is and how much bigger and more objects and things you know you would worry that it's just maybe not possible to get it quite as detailed but I think they've lived up to that expectation it's quite beautiful and is filled in nicely with all the additional spectators and other various things on the sides of the track they pretty much answered all my wishes if you saw the live stream race I did a couple weeks ago or a week ago really and adding all the campfires and parked cars and tents and really have made it feel that atmosphere that you know existed here and still exists here to some extent but that camping you know it's really a camp and then a race breaks out because you would have only seen the cars for a race like this 14 times a lap or 14 times for the whole race 14 laps around the course was the full grand prix so it's not exactly like there's a ton of action on the circuit you really get limited chances to view for the main grand prix Obviously a bit more for the longer races and that's why those have been so popular here but it's all about the whole experience will come through such a tricky uh, hop there so easy to get wrong as well all right throttle up for the straight so it's able to pass Pescarolo but these two in front have been quite fast you can see Castle Nürburg or the fortress there on the top of the hill looming over and such a different experience with this having the elevation changes I absolutely love it Flat out now, gaining on the two in front. Got the slipstream, maybe a slightly better gearing than the AI do as they sort it out to come up to Tier Garden. Flat out through. Well, I'm gonna gain on them quite rapidly, but where do you go with it when they're too wide? Get off the throttle here as we come to the chicane. This is what was added in 1967. Or after the 66 races, these two fender to fender, <laughs> if they had fenders. All right. Get it onto the main straight. We got one lap to go. Hopefully we can get a top 10 out of this. line p11 so i just need one more spot to get it up to fifth gear for just a moment as pescarolo is going to really lunge on the brakes there I'll try to break later myself it's always sketchy all right slide up the inside side by side as we get onto the back section of the course the spectators will be loving it the crew as well they'll see the car is side by side trying to make the passes. We'll come down to this left-hander to get onto the Nordschleife. Ooh, as I lock up the brakes there, Pescarillo is going to slide on by again. He's up the inside anyways. We'll come onto the Nürburgring or the Nordschleife itself. So by going for a position there, I lose a position back down to 12th. Got some work to do here in the final lap. 14 laps around here sounds short but because of the distance we all know that that's quite a, a massive distance to go around this track and uh, it's a good challenge if you want to challenge yourself to try to do in these types of cars 14 laps around the circus Pescarello got it all wrong there get up the inside into Kittelbacher oh he's gonna hold on to it there all right side by side just slide in front of him though so we'll rush down just need to be careful over the fluke plots don't let him push you too much don't have to throttle at the car we'll settle over the rise double right handers get on the throttle he closed in quite a lot there but made it through All right up to fifth and this is hard on a nice weather day trying it with rain and trying to emulate those 1968 conditions is so tricky the puddles and things in AMS2 really make you feel the terror of trying to race around here in the rain there's a great video of Jackie Stewart doing a commentary lap around this just driving a streetcar he talks about how even on a nice day, especially in the morning, go out for practice, various parts of the course will still be wet from 
from the, the nighttime mists and things. You have to be very careful coming around corners, especially if they're shaded, because one corner might be very different than the next. And of course, classically, if it rains on one part of the Nürburgring, it's maybe not gonna be raining everywhere around it. So those types of summertime conditions just add that extra bit that makes this track so legendary and special. You got a bit of smoke from a car in front or something, maybe somebody blowing up. It's gonna get quite interesting here as we all find our way by. That's an extra position. That gets me that top 10, I think. That's not the fair way to do it. So cool to see AI have mechanicals and things like that. Down to second gear, Catlin Hard. Customize this AI set a bit that comes with a ton of extra skins and I'm running most of the I guess you'd call them the also rans but a lot of the one-off drivers and things and I think it's quite a nice set since we do have some of the genericized cars I'm driving the V8 itself and our first gear here driving the V8 version the generic one which is my favorite of the set surprisingly even though it's generic and we do have the real McLaren and the Lotus and the Brabham I've always liked the feeling of this one the most as we'll go through the hop there, try to carry some speed through Exmula. Try not to spin the car out either. And do gain on the two in front, but not quite enough to do it. This is my teammate, my Surtees teammate in front. Got a second gear. Bolt being held up by whoever's driving the Lotus 72 up there. We'll rush onto the back section of the course. It feels a little cliche in sim racing to race around the Nürburgring, unfortunately. I think it's just become that circuit that people, when they first start out, or at least first hear about it, and they do sim racing, whether that's Gran Turismo or any other sim, it's kind of that thing you naturally gravitate towards, and so many have done that almost rite of passage of learning the whole circuit. And I think that's great. I think it's important to never lose sight of why that's fun. And uh, having this slightly historic version of it here, or not even slightly, but very historic, awesome recreation of it as it was, has just given that excuse to race it again this week and really race it, learn the track in a car and have fun with those things. And uh, I'm remembering why this is so much fun to do. It makes me want to go do it in other sims as well. Because racing around the Nürburgring, once you get it in a car and you can really feel like you're on the edge, is a ton of fun. It makes you feel a little superhuman, I think. up behind these two. I'd have just a little bit of time left to try to make another pass. I think I'm sitting P10, so I have to be careful not to lose it to Henri behind. Boy, he got right up behind me, though, and got a little loose coming out of the corner. Track falls away on the exits of so many of these curbs. All right, second gear. Around into Brunchen now. Block Henri there. Oh, I'm going to have a little bit of a run here to the right. Almost making contact. Have to get up on the curb a little bit. Throw it up the inside. That's not a place you can pass. Might have made slight contact again. Getting away with it, though. Luckily. All right, come around. A bit of a run. This hop here really takes the wind out of it. You can't push hard into that corner because the car gets all light. Have the same thing happen here again to the left. Just the weight on the throttle, you really want to punch it there, but it takes something extra special to do that. All right, weave our way then towards the second carousel. A fourth gear, Henri's looking to the inside. I have to give him a little bit of space. That was very uncomfortable. Second gear around the top of the hill. I'm gonna understeer a lot. Throttle up, just able to sneak in front of him. Ooh, hard into the second carousel, carry some speed out of it. Try to set it up for the Dotinger. Hopefully have enough speed here. And these two in front don't go side by side, but we'll hop over the hop there. Probably my best time through it. Up to fourth gear. And of course, they're going to go side by side in front, but try to get that slipstream and see what I can do with it. So Henri would, should be tucked up behind me, but he's trying to look at a pass. All right, flat out then. Ooh, over the top of the hill, the car gets so light and bounces. There's really nowhere to go. Lotus 
just is going to flick to the right there. Oh, can I get both of them squeeze on by? Wonder what the heck am I doing there? It's the car in front. <laughs> I lucked out so much there. The safety crews just in the nick of time saving my life. So we'll come down. To, oh, the final chicane is Henri's going to squeeze on by. I can't have that. Ah, not able to hold on to the car through there. Going to tap it and spin out. Uh, spin it back around. I kept my foot in the clutch, luckily, and we'll come across the line. That was a very hectic ending. The car parked on the circuit. I didn't see him for the last second. It would have been so dangerous in real life, but I still get a P10 somehow, so I think that was another car that was in front of me that broke down. So all in all, coming away with a P10, but how much fun is that, racing these cars around here? I can tell you that's probably the next thing I'm going to do after making this video is just come right back out here. And that's not even the whole track. Racing around the Nürburgring might have turned into a bit of a cliche over the years. Like I said, a lot of folks when they first get into sim racing or racing, whether it's Gran Turismo or iRacing or Automobilista, Seto Corso, whatever it is, the Nürburgring might be one of the first tracks you go to because I think we all had that moment, whether we knew it before we started sim racing or by scrolling through the menu and seeing this crazy 174 corner behemoth of a circuit. It has that natural draw. So whether you truly love historic racing or this is a bit of an excuse to bring yourself back to the Nürburgring, it hasn't lost any of its luster to push a car around this amazing circuit. Having a period version of this track to fit alongside the other 1971 tracks in AMS2 is great. We almost have the full Formula One calendar for the 1971 season or thereabouts. And I would certainly welcome some of the others. Uh, of course, a lot of folks have been talking about Monaco. And although Monaco is not one of my favorites to drive, it certainly would be a fun experience in a sim which is this beautiful. But also Zandvoort or Monschuit Park, Mossport or Watkins Glen, any of those other tracks would be welcome, welcome additions just to round out the calendar for 1971. And, and some more historic cars would always be good as well. I think we could use a couple more touring type cars or specifically for that GT Classics set of cars that has the uh, Corvette as well as the Porsche RSR. Getting a BMW CSL Batmobile type car would be, would be perfect for this and just really help fill out that class. So I hope this track does well for Ryzen and gets a lot more folks interested in AMS2, at least for a little while, to race some awesome cars around this version of the circuit. The Nordschleife itself is familiar enough that it's not too hard to pick it up and, and get racing on it, if you know the modern version, but the scenery and things are different in a way that's very natural, or just gives that natural impression. I have to say the diehard in me, the historic racing fan, does lustfully look at the 1960s version and just kind of imagine how cool that would look in AMS2. But we do have the Sudschleife, which I think gives you an amazing impression of what the 60s version of the ring would look like. And who knows, if this does really well, maybe Ryza someday would make a further backdated version and give us that 50s, 60s era. But for now, this is more than enough to have fun with. I've been playing this pretty much nonstop for the past week, different cars, different circuit configurations. And this has just been the Nordschleife in this video. So I do want to, at some point, take some cars around the Sudschleife or maybe the Gesamtstrecke and make a video or two about that. So if you have any car ideas or things that you'd like to see me race in, or maybe do a bit more history specifically on those versions and, and what took place there, let me know. But for now, that was at least one fun sprint race around the vintage Nordschleife. So until next time, this is GP Laps, and as the locals say, I'll feed a Zane.